So, now, on to oil. We want to introduce a guest who says that oil possibly could get to $200 a barrel. You can see it now. It is at $133.69. Uh, Somehow I'm a little bit concerned about that quote because it was just up around $139. So uh, we're going to go on to our guests now. I want to introduce Matthew Simmons. He's the chairman of Simmons and Company International. Matt, welcome. I know you had a little trouble getting here today, so we're glad you could make it. Yep. Train traffic. Well, you know, it's always something, isn't it? But so let's get right to it. When you talk about uh, two hundred dollar a barrel oil, will it get there even if the Saudis boost production? Maybe they've just made a token gesture over the weekend, but there are experts who say the Saudis could pump a lot more. What's your take on that? Well, what they've said is that they're hopefully going to put another two hundred thousand barrels a day on the market, which is two hundred thousand is a percentage of eighty eight million is kind of a drop in the bucket to no pun intended. <laughs> there are people that continuously say that they have another 2 million, 3 million barrels a day of spare capacity. The problem is that the likelihood of that is so utterly low today that we shouldn't be taking third-party estimates or their, their statements. It's time to go in and ask all the producers in the Middle East, all the key producers in the world, we want third-party auditors to come in and tell us what exactly is the state of your individual key oil fields. I think too many are in decline. But so bottom line, then, you're not convinced that uh, increasing oil production by 500,000 barrels a day is sustainable by the Saudis because of potential limits on those fields or because of political will? Possibly. Where do you stand on the sustainability of that? Well, possibly not even doable, uh, let alone sustainable. I think you have several issues. Is it doable? How fast are some of their old mature fields declining? All this is a state secret, and that's wrong. It is time to basically open up and get real field by field transparency because this is starting to get serious. Okay. In terms of your price target, I, I said at the outset that you said $200 a barrel, quite doable. Why? Well, first of all, look at the, at the speed at which we've come from $70, $80 a barrel now to effectively $140. Our markets are very tight. Our usable inventories in the United States are at record low levels. Uh, the supply in too many parts of the world is now in decline. Uh, demand is still growing. And you add all of that up and you say, we have a tight market and oil is still inexpensive on any sort of comparable basis to other things we buy, other than this sticker shock. Uh, in terms of gasoline, what's your target there, Matt? Well, I think gasoline should lead oil, but it, at the very least, it has to follow oil. And uh, again, gasoline at $4 a gallon, uh, it sounds expensive, but the rest of the world are laughing at us because we think it's expensive. I was told two weeks ago that in Istanbul, gasoline prices were $11.67 a gallon. Uh, that's about $0.69 cents a cup, so that's not very expensive, relative, other than relative to what we paid. We, we got along for too long where motor gasoline was almost free and we took it for granted and now it, we, it, we're in the waning days of being able to use it. And that's for sure and we know that as you know uh, recently as 1998 uh, oil prices were down to what eleven dollars a barrel? I mean gasoline down oil to prices, a buck? Yeah oil prices were hovering around ten to twelve dollars a barrel and even worse conventional wisdom thought they were going to go to five and stay there for a decade or two, and it was stupidity. Well, man, here's my question, though. It's one thing to say, oh, well, they pay three times as much in Istanbul. Fine. But Americans are used to paying so much less. Gasoline at $4 a gallon, we're hearing reports of demand destruction. It continues to rise. Many economists say you're going to see a nasty recession. If the, world, if the U.S. has a nasty recession, that has implications for the rest of the world. What I don't understand about this argument about oil and gas going ever higher, hyperbolically, is at some point demand could really crash. Do you have, what, what is your answer to that, a, a possible recession? And that maybe brings oil prices down. Well, what I, what I, I think actually demand needs to ease off now because it's, just, it's too high. What I'm more worried about than all of the people saying, oh, demand is now being self-destructed, there was an article in the New York Times uh, uh, yesterday about the record number of automobiles that are running out of gas because too many people are leaving their tanks almost empty. That is really dangerous stuff to do. You know, uh, gasoline is now apparently, from what I hear on the news, almost 4% of, of household budgets. That's too low. It's too important a part of what we do to be just 4%. Okay. 
in terms of uh, supply, what what needs to be done now to boost it? Because it, I think you're it, it, you're spot on. Clearly, you're you're one of the big oil guys that uh, we were so focused on demand and and supply has really stagnated since about 2004. But when you look at all the reasons oil production is stagnated, it's not necessarily because there isn't more oil that could be gotten out of the ground. It's because, like in Mexico, lack of investment. You're questioning what's going on in Saudi Arabia. Uh, what can be done, what should be done now to boost supply? Well, I'm, I'm not at all sa sanguine that there's anything more that we can do to boost supply. We're out of drilling rigs today. Uh, you could have seen that coming a decade ago, but no one did. We said, oh, drilling rigs, we don't need to drill anymore. Uh, they're spending an enormous amount of money around the world. The problem is that the decline curve of Cantorell now looks like this. The decline profile in the deep water, these fields, they reach a peak and they go down and in five years they're basically essentially almost gone. Modern technology created decline curves that were too vicious. Uh, there isn't another place in the world we know that we could find another North Sea. So I think we've run out the clock. So uh, and we again, we need to prepare ourselves to use less. To use less and but and but a high price you would think would would help us get there, you know, more quickly. But again, I, I just want to make sure I have in mind what are your what is your ultimate price target for oil? What is your ultimate price target for gasoline here in the United States? You know, I, I don't have any serious ultimate price target, uh, but I do quite often remind people that uh, if you just pull a number out of the air and it's a good round number, I'm going to use $500 a barrel, that is 95 cents a cup. No, excuse me, 95 cents a cup is $650 a barrel. Uh, uh, so 95 cents a cup is too cheap for crude oil on a long-term basis. The fact that it's higher than it's ever been is neither here nor there. We, we wasted so much of our most valuable energy by giving it away. Uh, any way to make money in oil at this point? Well, I think the companies that understand what's going on, uh, the companies that basically help reduce the energy intensity are going to make some money. The engineering and construction companies are going to make some money. The, the oil service companies and drilling companies that have enough rigs and manpower, this is their day in the sun, but they had 30 years of awful, awful times. It's one of the reasons we have such hard problems today. Prices were too low for too long. Well, that seems. I hope you'll come back soon. We enjoyed our time with you today. Uh, we uh, hope you'll come back and we can spend some more. So many aspects of this question, and we feel like we just got started. So, like I said, doors it's open. A, come back soon. It, it's the most complicated question of the 21st century. And that's why we'd like to address it again with you. Thanks for joining us.